Aloha, everybody, and welcome to the final part of Double Dragon Neon. We're still going through the Neon Palace and taking the fight to Skullmageddon and his thugs. Still got a whole bunch of Hoverbizzles, Lindas, Williamses, Abobos, the Sorcerer Guy here. A lot of thugs still left to beat up. I had to split this level into two parts because it's such a big place. But there's the homing energy ball I was talking about, and now he's going to spawn... Lightning directly on top of me. The good news is I was grabbing those hover bizzles, and when you grab people when they're stunned, you actually have a good invulnerability period. So it's also good to grab things as well to dodge enemy attacks along with the dodge roll. So, you know, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. And Jesus Christ. Ooh, a one-up. It's a good idea to check the environment for one-ups in the final level, but man, Skullmageddon is quite the deadly prankster because he just keeps putting a whole bunch of explosive devices in all of these items. Look at all these grenades! Ooh, a battery! To the grenade! <laughs> and another one-up. I bought, like, all the one-ups at the shop, but I really don't need them because the final stage is just scattered. Scattered, I say, with a whole bunch of lives and one-ups to really keep you in there. Uh, even once we beat the second last boss fight, uh, there's going to be a secret opening that I can find three extra lives in as well. So, uh, this place hands you lives like it's candy, which is good. It's the final level. You don't want to get too far and then die right at the very end, you know? So I should mention Double Dragon Neon has a very special achievement called You Did What? And how you unlock this achievement is you have to get 50,000 on Double Dragon. <laughs> Specifically, you have to get $50,000. I have $12,000 right now. But if I had $50,000, I would get the You Did What achievement. And uh, that's actually another reference. Again, I love the fact that WayForward is really passionate about the Double Dragon franchise. They followed all of these different references. You know, when they, tr when they reference the fact that Bimmy was a thing in Double Dragon 3 with the uh, the clones in the laboratory and stuff. This achievement is a reference to the 1990, 91, I can't remember which year it was, the movie The Wizard, starring Fred Savage. Because uh, Fred Savage and his, his brother Jimmy, or it might have been his cousin Jimmy, I can't remember. But uh, they're in this arcade, right? And they're only there for like two minutes, and they're about to leave, and then Fred Savage notices that Jimmy was playing Double Dragon, and... Oh my god, you got 50,000 on Double Dragon? And he, he'd only been playing the game for like two minutes, right? <laughs> and it's one of those lines you don't forget with the wizard because it's just a big NES commercial for kids, you know? <laughs> All of it's just leading up to the big reveal of Super Mario Bros. 3 at the end, but um, yeah, getting 50,000 in Double Dragon, you can't do it in two minutes. There's no way you can do it in two minutes. You have to go quite a ways before you can get 50,000 points. So, that movie is bullshit, sir! <laughs> it is bullshit, I say. But, um... Again, I just love the fact that WayForward paid respect to that particular reference. There is an achievement in Double Dragon Neon for getting 50,000 in Double Dragon Neon. <laughs> good stuff, man. Good stuff. What's over here? Another one-up! They're just all over the place, aren't they? And money. And tapeworms! Jesus Christ! Punch, 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 punch. Let's see what I got. Power Gambit! I'm stronger! Yeah! And I got Bomb Toss. But more importantly, Power Gambit! Another Power Gambit! Oh, yeah! <laughs> I just picked up three Power Gambits from these damn tapeworms, so it's a good thing I upgraded my Power Gambit mixtapes from 10 to 20, because I'm sure I just bypassed 10 right then and here, so, uh, yeah! Now I'm even stronger. Ooh, three treasure chests, only one key. What the button? He said button. He didn't say the other word. <laughs> I, he wouldn't swear in this game. I, uh. <laughs> You'll never defeat me, you weak little fox! Anywho, we're heading to the final boss fight, folks. Skullmageddon. You got nowhere to run, Skullmageddon! Now where's Marion? Oh, where are my manners? I haven't introduced you to the new and improved Marion. I call her... Evil Marion! I'm bad. 
You evil jerk! You're going down! Silence, baby! Oh my god! Our girlfriend's turned evil! <laughs> and now she's fighting for Skullmageddon! Oh boy. This is a very similar fight to the Skullmageddon battle that was at the end of Stage 2. The difference is Skullmageddon's got a few new tricks up his sleeve. He shoots double the fireballs. And that thing that just happened right there, he got surrounded with all this green fire and I couldn't touch him. And the only way to get rid of that green fire is to actually attack Marion, who's floating in the sky, because then she'll get out of the way and the fire will dissipate. She's the one responsible for the fire that surrounds Skullmageddon. And there you saw that extra move where he creates this big sucking in whirlpool thing that uh, it's not a good idea to dodge roll away from. You'll never escape it if all you're doing is dodge rolling. But uh, if he does do it again, you can run from it with the right trigger button to get away from it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about killing Marion. You can't kill her. You only swing at her and she moves out of the way. But uh, and there's nothing we could do to undo this evil that has been committed. Oh god. Why Marion? Why? I've saved you so many times, don't you love me anymore? Oh, God. This damn dark magic. I... Stop that! Stop making green fire. Either way, you can dodge under the fireballs with the duck button. And, uh... Yeah, that's Skullmageddon Part 2. This is pointless! I'm a master of space and time! Follow me if you dare! Oh, believe me! I dare! I double dragon dare! I'm finally free! Ugh, oh, you don't want to know what I've just been through. But he's gone now. I'll use the power of love to send you after him. <laughs> Wicked! Oh, and... Uh, I'm pretty sure human bodies can't survive this transition, so, uh... What? Uh, it'll be fine. Just go! Uh, I feel different. Well, no turning back now! Wow, the power of love could do anything. <laughs> We are now the Robro, and uh, secret area right here. I like secret areas. At the very beginning of this section, there's an invisible ladder that you can use to slide down, and there's a lot of treasure chests with keys that you can open up for some cash and mixtapes, as well as some extra lives going into the very, very final battle. Bet you didn't know about this area, did you? Eh? Eh? There's not even an achievement for this. So, yeah. Three whole extra lives. Booyah. But yeah, the power of love, thanks to Marion, has turned Billy into a robot cyborg Power Ranger guy? Either way. Ooh, 999 damage! <laughs> no one can stop me now. Just punch him and they die. Punch him and they die. If you actually use your special attack, your special attack is weaker than your punch. So all you really want to do is punch them once and they'll just instantly die. Four of Bobos? Oh no, I can't handle four. Dead. Dead. <laughs> okay, that hurt, but dead. You goddamn jerks. Where's Skullmageddon? Ah, you! You've taken my pride! You scrapped my rocket dojo, laid waste to my laboratory, broke my televisions, and murdered countless Williamses! All I wanted was a date! This ends now! Giga Skullmageddon! Okay, so this is the final boss of the game, folks. He can't possibly be that difficult. I... holy... Jesus! That drained my entire health bar! Holy shit! <laughs> Luckily, he doesn't spam that attack often, but yeah, he can slash you and do this amazing combo where he just slashes you, slashes you, impales you with his sword, and just murders you right then and there. But, uh, Giga Skullmageddon fights a little differently from the past two fights. He likes to teleport all over the place. He likes to shoot all of these ghostly apparition heads that you have to duck under. A lot of sequences where he goes all the way to the other side of the room, and then you have to duck under a whole bunch of them. 
Luckily, you can stun him with the fireball like I just did, so that's actually a great way to bypass him. Instead of dodging all of these things, I could easily just, like, throw a fireball, it will reach him, stun him, and then I could just run the whole rest of the way and beat him up. But, uh, yeah. Our 999 damage doesn't really apply to Giga Skull Mageddon because he's made of metal and he's just as strong as our Robro here, so, uh... When he's surrounded by all of this white fire, you don't want to go near him because that will actually damage you. Marion's not here to beat up, you know, because she was causing the fire in the last boss fight. <laughs> so you just have to wait for the fire to go away while you're dodging a whole bunch of bombs or a whole bunch of whatever his particular energy projectile may be at that particular moment. He has a lot. He has a lot of different moves. But uh, every time he teleports, it's actually easy to hit him because you can instantly dodge over his... Dodge under his sword swings, dodge under his his arm swings, you know? And the only time it becomes dangerous is when he goes off screen and does some hyper crazy awesome attack like he just did there. I would recommend always running and jumping at the very last second if you can anticipate the last second, because that really, really, really helps, let me tell ya. Like I said, kicks are stronger than punches, so uh, if you get up close to him, you might want to kick him. Or I'm just going to punch him to, you know, make this fight a little bit slower so we can enjoy the awesomeness that is the Skullmageddon fight. He actually has this really incredible move, which I don't show off in this playthrough, but uh, he has this move where there's these four Skullmageddon logos that are real bunched up close together. And if you're in the center of that, he hits you and then he does... Basically the Omni Slash from Final Fantasy VII. Like, the whole screen gets surrounded by, like, purple energy, and he just, like, hits you, hits you, hits you over and over again until he drains your entire health bar, and it's kind of amazing. <laughs> if you haven't seen Cloud's Omni Slash from, from uh, Final Fantasy VII, it's just, uh... He just slashes you a lot, and there's nothing you can do about it. Good lord, there's nothing you can do. This would be it. But I dodged it. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the Omni Slash would have been. But, uh, yeah, Skullmageddon is a really, really fun fight. I think he's one of the best final boss fights. He reminds me so much of Shredder from the Turtles in Time game. The way he would teleport and the way he would just, like, constantly zip around and... But, uh, this one's a little bit easier to manage. And we beat him, folks. I'm going to be silent for the ending credits because the ending credits are something beautiful to behold and I don't want to talk over that, but uh, we just beat Double Dragon Neon. All that's left is to hit this guy one more time and send him off the edge. Slap me some skin! <laughs>
Incredible. <laughs> I lost my shit when I saw that ending for the first time. That was just spectacular. Um, I should mention, if you're playing in co-op, Skullmageddon is not actually the final boss. There is an extra fight where Billy and Jimmy have to fight each other, as in player one must fight player two, and the winner will get Marion's affection. Do you see Billy's holding Marion in that ending screenshot right there? It could potentially be Jimmy if you're playing in co-op and you get to see a defeated Billy looking sad like, oh man. <laughs> so that's a great bonus thing about co-op, just to prepare you for when you do your own co-op playthrough, and you should. Uh, so I'll give my final thoughts here with all of the concept art that unlocks after you beat the game, because it's pretty fun to see how all the different designs of the Lee brothers, Marion, uh, Linda, Williams, Abobo, etc. were uh, when this game was being made. But uh, Double Dragon Neon, oh my god. Jay Kaufman's soundtrack is incredible. Whether you're just listening to the mixtapes, or all of the amazing vocal tracks that are scattered throughout the game, or just that ending credits theme with Skullmageddon, that was amazing. That was just incredible. The art style I really like. I, I, it's not the greatest looking game in the world or anything, but I think it definitely has a flair and a style that reminds you so much of the 80s, which is when the Double Dragon series started, you know? It's got an interesting atmosphere. The combat is so satisfying. I love the fact that I can duck under attacks to get double strength with the gleam feature. I like that it has a dodge roll. I like that it still has, like, grabs and punches and kicks and a lot of different combinations you can do to make the combat more exciting. I know a lot of people think it's slow and stiff. I personally never found that. I think it's really engaging, especially if you're playing on the harder difficulties, like Double Dragon mode. That's when the difficulty makes the combat feel so much more exciting and important and fresh, and just like, ah! That's when the game really comes alive, as far as I'm concerned. But, um... Not a super long game, only ten stages that you'll be replaying over and over again. Building up your characters by upgrading your mixtapes, collecting more mixtapes to get even stronger. There's a lot of replayability with this game. And uh, if you've never played it with a friend, get them to play it with you, and they will have such a fun time discovering the character of Skullmageddon. <laughs> and all of the wacky bosses, whether it's the Mega Man boss, whether it's the, uh, the little shop of horrors plant boss or whatever, you know. This game just has personality to burn. Easily my favorite Double Dragon game ever made. And I love the fact that WayForward got to have a lot of fun with it, you know? Like, the publishers were totally cool with WayForward making Billy and Jimmy kind of dude bros, you know? <laughs> like, every one of their one-liners, their jokes when they're going through the stages are so, like, gnarly guy, release the Kraken, you know? They come off as like these dumb oafs sometimes, but it's 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 charming and it's delightful. And I like that that's the characters of Billy and Jimmy in this game. I love that that's their personality, you know? It's fun. It's super fun. So uh, get Double Dragon Neon while you still can, because uh, it's a digital game. Don't know how long it'll be digital. Might leave the ether, the virtual ether sometime, but I don't know when. But uh, yeah, good stuff. This cheat, you have to input it in the level map and you'll become the Robro, which is the the thing we've been, we beat up Skullmageddon as, you know, the robotic Billy and Jimmy. But uh, yeah, folks, that is Double Dragon Neon. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned this Tuesday for my Final Fantasy 3 video in the Final Fantasy retrospective. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you discovered something really cool and fun with yours truly, the Great Clement. So um, until next time, folks. I'm the Great Clement. Toodles.